What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to build three simple command line python games in under 15 minutes so let us get right into it all right so the first game is going to be a simple simon sass game where the computer tells us a sequence of colors and we need to memorize it and repeat it so for this we're going to need the random module we're going to say import random we're going to need os so import os and we're going to need time so first of all, we want to have colors that we can choose from. So colors are going to be R, G, B, and Y for red, green, blue, and yellow. You can also, if you want, add more colors. Uh, now, if you have the extra time, since we have a time pressure here in this video, I'm not going to do it. But if you have extra time, you can also use Colorama. I have a video on this channel on how to use colored output in the console. Uh, if you want to spice that game up a little bit. Uh, but you have to define the colors and then you say Simon's sequence. So Simon equals an empty sequence at first, and we're going to have a loop. We're going to say four score in range, and then you can specify, okay, zero is the start, but uh, how long shall the sequence be until you have won the game? Or do you want to make it a high score game? Then you probably want to use a while loop. We're going to say, okay, 10 is the maximum. If you manage to uh, do 10 of those, you're going to, uh, you won the game. Otherwise you have your score. So for score in range zero up until 10, we're going to say Simon's sequence is going to get a new member, which is going to be a random dot choice from colors. So we're going to pick a random color and we're going to append it to Simon. And we're going to say, okay, for every color that we already have in Simon's string, we're going to say, we're going to print that color and we're going to wait times the leap wait for 1.5 seconds before we do os.system and we're going to clear the screen. Now on Windows, we use CLS on Linux. You want to say clear instead of CLS, depending on the operating system. Um, and this is just going to show us all the colors that are in the sequence step by step. And then it's going to ask us to repeat the sequence. So we're going to say, okay, guess equals input and then repeat and we have to repeat it as a string as a whole string and then we're going to do os system dot uh, or os system dot cls or clear and that's it and of course if the guess that we made is not the sequence of simon we're going to break and in the end we're going to print um game over over like that, your final score is score. There you go. So we can now run this and see if it works. And as you can see, we get B. Oh, actually, we need to do it in um, the Windows command line because otherwise clear screen is not going to work. So we'll go to desktop, programming, Python, neural nine, Python main dot, uh, main.py. There you go. And you saw uh, G for a second. So repeat G. Now it says G Y. Okay, G Y. Now it says G Y B. G Y B. There you go. Now I'm going to do a mistake. Now I'm going to make a mistake G Y B G. So I'm going to say G Y B B. And you're going to see game over your final score is three. All right, so the next game is going to be a number guessing game, the computer is going to come up with a random number and we need to guess that number. So we give a guess and the computer tells us the actual number is larger or less than your guess. And then we need to adjust the guess. And we're going to count uh, the tries, we're going to say, okay, you needed 12 tries or 15 tries or two tries to guess the number. So for this, we only need random, we're going to import random. And then we're going to say number equals random dot rand int in between zero and 10,000, for example. And we're going to say tries starting at zero and found equals false. Then we get into a loop while not found. So while we have not found or guessed the number, you can also call this guessed. Uh, we're going to say guess equals integer of input uh, guess. There you go. You can also do exception handling here if you want to. 
Uh, and we're also going to increase the tries right away because you cannot win with zero tries. You have to make at least one try. Uh, and once we have that, we're going to say, okay, if the guess that we provided is the actual number, we're going to say, uh, we're going to first set found to true. And we're going to say print, you found the number after uh, we need to make this an F string, let's call it, uh, you found the number number after tries, tries. There you go. Then elif, if the guess is larger than the number, we're going to say the number you are looking for is uh, less than than the guess. I didn't want to open up the settings. There you go. We need to make this an F string again. And last but not least, else we're going to copy that and say it's greater than the guess. There you go. That's the whole number guessing game. We can start this right now. And we can start guessing, for example, 400. The number you're looking for is greater than 400. Okay, 700. The number you're looking for is greater than 700, 900. It's greater than 900, which is very, oh, actually, it's not unlikely because we have 10,000, not 1,000. So maybe we should start with 5,000. Greater than 5,000, 7,000. Less than 7,000, 6,000. 6,500. 6,250. This is actually a divide and conquer. You just have the problem size um, every time. So this should be uh, this should be winnable in logarithmic time. So we have something like 600 6200 6230 6220 6220 oh, come on 6222 greater than that greater than that greater than that there you go. This was the number 17 tries. This is a number guessing game. All right, so last but not least, we're going to implement the game with the most code, which is still quite simple, rock, paper, scissors, we're going to start by importing random. And we're going to say player equals zero CPU equals zero. Those are the scores. And we're going to say that the first player that has three points wins the game. So we're going to print three points win the game. There you go. And we can say while player less than three and CPU less than three, we're going to say the CPU choice is going to be um, random dot choice from a list which we call rock, paper, scissors like that. And then we're going to say player choice equals input rock, paper or scissors. There you go. And then we're going to say, okay, if the player choice dot lower because you know, if the player enters something like uh, rock, it should be converted to rock. If he enters something like rock, it should be converted to rock so that we can compare it. So if player choice dot lower is the same as the CPU choice, then we have a tie. So we can say print tie no points. So nothing happens. Then elif if the player dot choice dot lower is equal to rock, then we have the possibility that the CPU choice uh, is equal to uh, it cannot be rock, so it can be scissors, then of course, the player um, gets a point because rock beat scissors and we can say, okay, um, uh, we can actually before we do any comparisons, we can say, print CPU, whatever the CPU chose, versus player, whatever the player chose. So we can say, player wins and one point. I don't know, that's 
uh, a weird message, but we can just copy that. Uh, or actually, we don't copy it. We say elif CPU choice equals um, paper. If that is the case, we're going to say CPU, not CPU choice, CPU plus equals one print F CPU wins one point. Actually, we don't need an F string here, by the way, because we're not having any variables here. And now what we do is we copy that. And we basically just change this to scissors. We change this to the thing that is being beaten by scissors, which is paper. And down here we have rock. And then one more time, we copy that. And we have uh, paper, paper beats rock. And down here we have scissors. And if the input is something else, we can just print invalid input new round. So we just skip and do nothing. So that's actually it. And in the end, we need to say print player wins if player larger CPU else CPU wins. It's a ternary operation here. So that should be it. If we run this, we should have a basic rock paper scissors game. So let's say three points were in the game. Let's start with rock. The computer says paper. So it wins. It has one point now and we have zero points. I am going to say rock again, rock against rock, no points, rock again. Uh, CPU wins again with paper, rock again, tie, rock again, CPU wins again with paper. Okay, that's a very, uh, doesn't seem like a random uh, game, but it is a random game. So let's do it one more time. Okay, now we beat the CPU because it says scissors, we can say rock again, uh, rock versus rock is no points, then we have rock versus scissors again, rock versus rock again, okay, again, a tie. Play wins. Okay, this is kind of doesn't seem too random. Is this now randomness inside of randomness? Or is it always win tie? No, okay, it's two ties here. Um, there you go. Now the CPU wins again. Player wins now. Okay, so it's it is in fact random. It's just unlikely that this happened. Now we can say scissors. Uh, player wins against paper. And then let's go with paper. CPU wins. Uh, so it's I think it's three versus two. But as you can see, this is how you code a rock, paper, scissors game in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button, leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.